Good afternoon. Today we're going to be discussing Anatomage, the software and the tool for teaching and educating more about the anatomy of the body and the cadavers. So to start off with, we come to the Anatomage table, we double click on this icon or this to open, this menu to open. And when this opens, we simply click on we, we get multiple of, cad uh, of modules, cadavers, functional anatomy, case library, histology, curriculum, prosection, anatomy, share. We're going to discuss the cadavers module, which contains in it the histology, the prosection, and some of the functional anatomies, uh, which has additional to what are the features in the cadaver, for example, in the cardiovascular uh, in the cardiovascular systems, the ECG there. In the case library, we can open side by side with the cadavers to compare scenarios or case studies versus the normal cadavers. So what it is about when we click on cadavers, we get the gross anatomy and the regional anatomy, which is actually the same, but these are focused more on the regions themselves. Four lovely human beings, may they rest in peace, donated their body for the sake of science in which they were thin, th thinly sliced and uh, 3D printed and then put together for us to give, uh, to get into the teaching tool of anatomy. So I have clicked on the first option, which is the male Caucasian, for us to start working on or knowing more about the features in the cadavers module, which again is the most comprehensive and contains the histology, the prosection, uh, and the regional anatomy itself. So let's start off with learning how to deal with this cadaver. By pinching in, and pinching out, we are zooming in and out. And as you come closer, and by using two fingers at a time, you are moving the cadaver up, down, left, right can see how much this is uh, accurate. You can see the pores on the face of this cadaver. So pinching in and out is zooming in and out. Using two fingers, we can move the cadaver along the table. And using one finger is to rotate. Try to use your fingertip and not the nails because this would give you a hard time. Say I have twisted the cadaver too much that I don't want to waste my time re-putting re it in that same position. So what I come and do is above the uh, home uh, button, there's the setting button and then you have to cancel. There's the setting button and then there's the uh, location of the cadaver or how it's located, you can simply click on the first one, which resets it to the its initial position. Another position would be on the side. Another position would be head down and then 90 degrees. And then finally, this one. My advice to you is whatever module that you are using is to come to the settings first to just uh, adjust how you want to work with your anatomy table. The first button, which is the two squares with the two squares underneath it, just tells me how do I want the keys or the knobs to be located. Left button, left up, right up, right button. And these two allow me to open two anatomages or three or more anatomages side by side. I can adjust how. Uh, big or small, I want this uh, this box to be for for comparison reasons. But the thing is, even if you open multiple anatomages next to each other side by side, you can only be working with one. This is for the first button. Whenever you close it, the settings will reopen again. The A is for the text. Usually, this is by default small and colored white but I have changed it to large and yellow and angled annotations we're talking about. If I don't want to select any other color, I would simply click on the color and not on the drop down menu. Then there is the explore tool, the measurements come in. Also, I want it large or uh, the different color. Closing it again, 
to look into the colors of the background. So by default, it's black. I can come and choose a white, gray, or any other color by clicking on the drop down menu. What are these? The arteries, the veins. They're not colored blue initially. Whenever you click them, the nerves and the lymph nodes, you'll be able to see them while we are working with the anatomage. And I'll show you how in, in a while. These two that are in a box, which is the heart and the magnifier would allow me to see the heart pumping and the flow of the blood inside the arteries and the veins. The magnifier would tell me more about the food, uh, the uh, blood supply, the innervation, the insertion, so on and so forth. Since I have selected it to be, again, this way that would be better. The pronunciation is, you'll be hearing a lady pronunciate every organ or structure that you will be touching. The ruler is for me to add the ruler on top of the table. And the language is for me to set up the language. This is a feature, the log is when you want to log your features or your settings to what you have done for any other user that's coming after you not to use it. After the settings is done and I am done with everything, let's start digging with uh, knowing what are the knobs. And after I have understood what's the pinching, what's the uh, rotating, and what's the moving, now it's time for me to know what's this brightness button about. Let's try to move down the brightness button. I would assume that this is for the brightness, but apparently this is removing layers from the cadaver. As you can see, I can see the heart beating and the blood flowing through the arteries and veins. And they are colored because I initially used them to be set as uncolored. And this is due to this heart button. If I want the heart to stop beating or the veins and arteries to stop having blood flow in them, I would simply click on the button and then they will turn static. As you can see here, the dissection knob, which is this one, it's gray, which means it's deactivated. It wouldn't be activated unless I stop the heart from the beating. Now you can see it turn into red, in which I can do the dissection for the cadaver for. Say I want to um, click on the duodenum. As you can see, because I have selected the magnifier, now I can see the blood supply and I can see the innervation and the function. The function is not underlined, which means clicking on it would give me nowhere, but clicking on the blood supply actually showed me the blood supply of it. And clicking on the innervation would show me the innervation of it as well. So these are hyperlinked also for more learning tools. More than that, clicking on it if I'm clicking outside, can you see this knob? It's gray, but clicking on the LEM, it would turn this colorful into a rainbow. What does this give me? If I click on it, I am able to remove the LEM or keep it. I'm able to color it, any color I choose, or to re remove the color. Clicking on it would get the color back and uh, on and off and clicking on the drop down menu will allow me to look more colors and choose more colors. And the annotation, which would remain with me even if I, if I re-add the layers again. And I can also play around with the uh, annotation, like put it anywhere I want. Do you think the color would remain yellow if I remove the layers again? Yes, it would, unless I come so if I close this, unless I come and click on the alien, and this would turn, this should turn uh, highlighted again. And then I can remove the annotation and the color. What is with the dissection now? Dissection, if it can be curved, linear, so I can go ahead and select what I want to dissect from the ilium and click on it. It will only dissect this structure. And if you go deeper, you can see that I have indeed removed the dissection 
in this part. If I want to undo it, I can simply come and click undo and removing dissection, and this will repair it back again to its place. Okay. So now I know that the brightness does not mean brightness. It actually means removing and adding layers. And I know that if I select on any structure because of the inner of the magnifier that I have selected, I can actually know more about this organ. <clears throat> I can remove this organ or keep it. I can annotate it. I can uh, dissect it and I can color it as well. What's with the other knobs? And let's see if I keep on removing more layers, would I be able to see the nerve system and the nervous system and the nodes. <clears throat> How can I tackle the nervous system, which I initially from the settings here selected it under the colors, remember? This is it, and the nodes. One other way is if I don't want to remove organs, I just want to see the whole system. So say I wanna see the digestive system by itself. I simply click here, which is removing all the systems, and I select the system that I want. Sometimes this might take time, and I can choose to annotate the GI tract, which will annotate for me all the structures that are un underneath it, and color it, which would color all the structures that are underneath it the same color. Or I can simply come and annotate only the structures that I want and color the structures that I want. It's a preference. If I want to search something, I can come here and type it rather than actually. Uh, looking for it under the system, then category, then the structure. Let's look into the lymphatic and the nervous. Mm. So you can see now that they are orange and green because I have already selected it to be uh, colored. If I come to the settings and remove the colors for the nervous system and the nodes, they will be pinkish again, the nodes, and the nervous system will be white. I'll be adding everything else again, all the layers again. I can simply do that by adding the layers. I, I want to remove the ileum. I click on the annotation remove the annotation, I can also remove the color. Similarly for the stomach, or I can come to the eye, which is the visibility, and go about it from here. Either or works. Now let's learn more about the dissection, which is this one now not the one that I get from selecting one of the organs. So if I choose the curve dissection and not the linear one, and I go around the nipple, if you click inside, this is the area that's gonna be removed for you. So let me click inside the circle that I've drawn and this will start removing layer by layer. Unlike when you clicked on the organ, the dissection would be only for the organ part. Here, when you're using the dissection from outside, you'll be dissecting layer by layer. And that's the comment that it's that is given to you. So whenever I'm clicking inside, I am removing layer by layer. If I want to undo, I can undo one at a time, or I can undo everything and it would repair for me and restore everything back again. This one, however, it's a clipping, so it would actually remove all the layers without asking me. So clicking inside would create a hole for me. So you click on the part that you want to remove. The part that you wanna keep, you don't click on it. You click inside the part that you want to remove. Say I want to keep everything. Uh, I want to keep nothing but this hole that I have created. So for instance, I just want to keep this part. Then I would click outside and you will have this note, which we're not gonna do because it takes a lot of time. To undo, we simply click the undo button. Clipping here, 
the other one, these are default clippings done for you. And this is the one that I usually say it's the sword. And as you can see here in both, the default is the first button selected for you. They are highlighted in blue. So if I simply comment, do the dissection, and I click on the part that I want to remove, I have dissected directly all the layers without being asked, do you want to remove layer by layer? And then again, I can come and undo. And if I want to return the cadaver to its initial position, I would simply come and click up over the settings, this button, just over it. Ah, and the settings I forgot to mention, the RL, which is the right left, you can keep it or you can remove it upon the pronunciation. So the right ventricle, the left ventricle. Now that we know what's the visibility, what's the heart, these are the questions and the explore. Uh, you can actually have gamification here, so you can turn the table as a horizontal table and have two teams competing against each other, and you can have whatever you have done as a professor or as a student for others to share again later, saved here as a preset. Let's just go here again. Now, let's see the magnifier. We've discussed it already. If you click it again, it will give you the last structure that you have uh, selected. Now, going under the magnifier, you can see this person was divided into two. This is the initial position, knob number one. Knob number two will divide the table into two for me. What is this again? Is this the brightness? No, this is the cross-sectional. So as I move down, I'm moving vertically across the human's body. Now I can see the brain of the cadaver. I'm dividing the table into two again. I can zoom in this part. I can twist it. And the nice thing about it, because there's the explore button here, as you can see this one, this would highlight for me the veins, the nerves, and the arteries. So if I click on one of those here, they will be if I remove the layers, they will actually be highlighted for us. Here. So if I clicked on the frontal lobe, it would show on the left-hand side. If I click on the frontal lobe, the left frontal lobe, it will also be selected on this side in which I can again Annotate, remove, recolor, and dissect. Not only this in the cross-sectional area, you can actually choose the default to be, instead of uh, vertical but uh, horizontal, or this way, or this way. So it's up to you to, to do uh, however you want it. This knob, will divide now the table for me into three parts, adding the CT MRI in which you have packs. CT MRI, we can provide it to the Anatomatch team and they can add it with the annotations and upload it into part of our case libraries. And again, here you can play around with the contrast, with the brightness of the CT MRI and with the density as well. You can also zoom in, zoom out and rotate. Coming to the third one, which is this one, it's already the cross-sectional. And again, I can choose it the way I want, this way. So it's it's simply like the second one, but instead of dividing the, the anatomatch table into two for me, it just selects the this part, the right-hand sided part, which denies me from the... Uh, knowing if I click on any one of those, how to locate it in the anatomatch. But it's still there for us to use if you just want the cross-sectional. And the nice thing about it is that you can see the three different ways of the cross-sectional, uh, one by one uh, on the left and two on the right, or divided 50, 25, 25 columns. 
one, two, three, four. The fourth knob is about the histology. So whatever I click here, so let's go into the scan because that's the easiest. And so let me add the layers either this way or by the visibility. Again, I always come and reminder, the visibility can do it for me. And the nice thing is that you can skip the left and right or adding the layers from the brightness button here. So let's select the flesh or the skin. Upon selecting it, I can see on the right-hand side, the histology of it. So I have different images of that. The difference between one, two, and three is that this thing highlighted here, which tells me that this is an interactive uh, image. And the first one, I'm only able to read the eye, which is a microscopic technique if it's available and the stain, who's, where is this image provided from? The second one is the same. The third one, however, this was brought up in which I can add the histology labels to it. And like it highlights it for me and I can annotate it. If I want to choose from the histology module, all I have to do is click on this button, which I can select by the tissue type or the organ type, or I can simply come and type here whatever I want. Similarly for the pro section, if you click on this button, With the histology, uh, external ugly muscle. So if you click on one of the structures, you will be given images also in the pro section in which you can read their eye or the information. They might be interactive or not. You can zoom in zoom out, rotate. This is interactive. So if I click on it, I can actually, again, highlight and annotate whatever I want. I can select another image as well. And I have the opportunity again to move back to the module from outside by clicking on the book. So you always have this option. And that's why I say always the cadaver module is the most comprehensive one because you can come back and forth, except for the functional anatomy. Uh, you will be only bounded by that region and you will have, for example, the ECG with the cardiovascular system there, which is not here. The case library, which contains a humongous number, which is increasing by the day uh, cases. For example, a person with a bullet in his head, which you can compare it with the regular cadaver and skeleton, skeleton system of, the, uh, of some certain animals in which you can compare them to the human beings as well. Let's continue. And one of the, uh, to the fifth one, I, I, as I recall, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, this is the fifth one. This is, this has advanced from Anatomage 8 to Anatomage 9, in which you can actually, you used to put a pathway to draw a pathway as XYZ point in which like if I drew it here, the, the camera would just come down or cross uh, crossing through. Now I can actually draw a path by simply clicking on the plus and I can choose the fly through to be linear or curve. I'll choose it as a curve and I'll simply select the, the, the point, new path, click new path and I'll start clicking on wherever I want it to go. And when I'm done, I will say I'm done. It will ask me if I want to edit the perspective, the camera position and the nodes and to export it into a video if I want to, or simply if I close it, I'm simply just viewing it at the spot. And it would show me. Upon clicking on, where you're moving, you will be also be able to hear uh, the pronunciation. So this is the pathway that I have created. There are already pathways that have been created for you by default. So she would pronunciate even faster. Whenever uh, one structure is done, then the pronunciation of the other would, would, uh, would be pronounced. And as you can see, the XYZ uh, points 
Again, you have always the chance to edit and to export. It's just like the laparoscopy being done. And that's very nice. The last one here, uh, how do I get back the cadaver? Again, by the visibility, I can re-add everything or I can add the layers from here directly. Adding the layers from here would give me the uh, cadaver zoomed to this area. Okay, let's try this one. So this is the last knob here under the magnifier. So I can choose plus again. And if I want to see these three points and I click done, I'm seeing the cross-sectional inside. I can zoom in and zoom out a little bit and I can rotate. And then again, you can upload it and save it as a JPEG. You can make it as a curve, you can make it as a linear, it's your choice. Let's return to the original cadaver's position laying on his back. And I want the original one, which has nothing next to it. Let's zoom in, move to the middle so that we can see. And as you can see also, if you zoom in, how accurate this is, Can you see here? This is so accurate. Okay, we have the these knobs now. This is self-explanatory, which is the pointer if you want it to be an arrow, a knife, a circle, and a hand, and the size of it, along with the color. The drop-down menu will always give me more options. Clicking on the color itself would allow me to select the color and unselect it. A newly added feature also to the Anatomage is not much nine is this recording which is like I'm doing now I'm recording for you my screen if you want to explain this for your students and add it to your PowerPoint presentation or if you want to share what you have done as a video for your other colleagues as a student you can come and do the uh, recording like you're explaining what has been done Generation Z and millennials, this is the screenshot. What is this helpful with? So say uh, as I am talking, uh, one note here, when I'm clicking on any of those, which is the pen measure and the pen, none of them is selected by default blue like in these, like in the di digestion and the uh, dissection, sorry, and the clipping. So you have to come and select whatever color you want. When it turns blue, now you can color. Do not close and then do, because closing it will give me the closing option or you, you'll not be able to use this feature. If you want to undo, you can simply, or one, undo one thing at a time, you will simply undo like this button, or you can remove all the drawings at a time. But one question, if you draw something, if you zoom in and out, what if you rotate, would this move with you? No. And that's why if you want this to be saved, you come and use the screenshot. Make sure not to use the keyboard that is by default in default by the anatomatch table because it would actually show with you in the cadaver and the uh, screenshot. So use a separate keyboard. And if I want something to be actually stuck to the to the cadaver and moving around with it. Even if I add layers, I would come and use the pin. So I'm pinning it, which is nice. If you are doing, for example, course about anesthesiology, uh, nerve blocking. So you just come and see where the nerve is and use the syringe and point it towards any angle that you find interesting and then uh, twist it the way you want. Any of those, you can use up to 10 of them. However, the needles, you cannot. You can use only one at a time. But if you click outside, it means you have locked it, so you cannot move it again. So what you have to do is come again, click on the pen, 
Now, if you click on it back again, you can remove it or you can twist it or shuffle it. So if I remove layers, the pin would remain with me and the pin would rotate with me. It would, it's just stuck there. The sad thing about it is that the pin only has numbers. It cannot be renamed. And that's why you can use both the pen and the pin for this case. So you can pin it, name it, or annotate it. So if you're annotating here, this section, annotate it by simply clicking here and annotate. Not this one, the external juggler, right? Okay? Or I can click it from here, either or. And now screenshot it with the pen. Like you can throw this annotation next to the needle. And then screenshot it. Or you can simply type any note that you want and then screenshot it. Finally, the measured the uh, the ruler. So if I want to measure the length of the arm or if you have a tumor in a, in a way or another, there are different ways to measure. You can measure the circumference, you can measure the angle, you can measure linear curve. Undoing one at a time, you use this one and undoing everything is deleting everything. So that's practically it for this module. Uh, I can show you how to go about other case libraries. Let's go into the other. So let's click on outside and case library, for instance, you can just simply type in whatever you want. Like I typed in gun shoot on the head, clicking on it and double clicking there. And then I can compare it by coming to the setting, selecting this part. And then so I can compare this part, which the gunshot is there as you can see it, to the simply I can come and select from this cadaver only the head. And let me first uh, do the settings as well. And do it like this. And simply come and select visibility and everything out but the skeletal system and only the head. If I want to undo everything, I can simply click on the on the drawing and undo. But at this point, because I have it closed, I'm not going to bother with that. I can also compare this part to the cadaver, to the other, uh, to the case library. So this is one way to go about it. Another thing would be, uh, in this case library, you can zoom in, zoom out, twist, annotate also. Let's get back to this one. So if you just shift it a little bit, so you see it can take part of your screen or all of your screen, and then you can share what you have saved with Anatoma share, which is also, this is a new feature. And then you can open the file as presets, which are here that you have saved. Let's see the functional anatomy. So if I deal with the cardiology, the only added value here over what has been discussed in the cadaver module, which again is the most comprehensive. And as you can see, there are more knobs here than you will see in the rest of the modules. Let's see this one. So again, uh, settings, cancel. Well, remove this one and I will remove the drawings by simply clicking on drawing and deleting everything. Yes, I will remove the pens by simply clicking on removing everything rather than the X, which should remove everything at a time. I can, I could have clipped everything from here so that I would be comparing only the skull to that of the case library. But let's see the K, okay, the, uh, the functional anatomy. Here you can see the ECG scroll. 
the conduction. I can remove this and I can add it slow motion and the blood flow. So now you can see how it's working. If I remove the blood flow, if I remove the slow motion, so, and I can move this anywhere I want, but as you can see here, the options are less than those of the actual cadaver module. I hope you benefited from this session and any questions, please don't hesitate to contact us at any time. Have a great day.